Air conditioners come in different sizes with a wide range of cooling capabilities, so it's really important to choose the right one that works for you. Many split units where the air blower and condensers are separate provide the most efficiency. Portable units, however, convenient less so. The truth is, however, many growers underestimate the size of AC unit they need. Then you've got the hassle of uninstalling it, packing it up, driving all the way back to the hydro store in a terrible mood and trying to convince them that it's defective when all along it's just the wrong damn size. Major bummer all around. So let me show you a brain dead simple way of choosing the right AC unit in the first place so you don't end up being that guy that everyone loves to hate. Like I said, let's keep it simple. I don't care what kind of grow lights you're using. HPS, metal halides, light emitting ceramics, plasma, T5 fluorescent CFLs, LEDs to your air conditioner. They're all heaters. Yes, LEDs produce heat too and plenty of it despite what you may have read. So for this exercise, just add up every watt of power in your grow room. So shoot for the maximum, guys. Okay, you know the juice you're using with all your grow lights switched on. But don't forget to include your pumps, dehumidifiers, oscillating fans, and anything else that consumes power. So what's your total? If you have multiple rooms, then calculate the separate totals for each room. A 10 light grow, that's 10 1000 watt HPS lights with a dehumidifier, some oscillating fans and pumps may be pulling upwards of 11,000 watts. Whatever your number, make a note of it as this is valuable and the key to working out your air conditioning needs, which we'll do in just a second. First though, let's pause for a moment of sober reflection. Think about what we're actually doing here or planning to do. You're not just cooling a bedroom in your house on a balmy summer evening for a few hours before turning in. No, sir. You are air conditioning a grow room, a room full of plants sat underneath powerful heaters. Remember, grow lights are heaters switched on for 12 to 18 hours a day. Hmm. Air conditioned grow rooms tend to be sealed, just like a padded cell. No, seriously. Sealed grow rooms do not rely on ventilation as the primary means of cooling, dehumidification, and carbon dioxide replenishment. Instead, your indoor garden's hot air is sucked into a heat exchanger, a lot of heat is removed, and that very same air is blown back into your garden, only cooler. Growers using this sealed room method have to supplement carbon dioxide levels using a tank or generator during the day so their plants can photosynthesize efficiently. Just before lights out, the extra CO2 supply is shut off. Then the room's air is dumped to the outside world and fresh regular air is pulled in for your plant's respiration phase during the night cycle. Now, think again about how hard your grow room air conditioner is going to have to work. Chances are your goal is to keep the daytime temperatures in the mid 70s if you live in a hot climate like Arizona you probably need an air conditioner to reach this target without any grow lights switched on include the 11,000 watts of energy into this equation and hopefully you're beginning to see the picture now air conditioners are rated in BTUs or British thermal units. According to the amount of thermal energy they can remove from a space, the common sizes are 12,000, 24,000, 36,000, and 48,000 BTUs. You may also hear folks refer to their AC units in tons. One ton, two ton, three tons, or four tons corresponds with 12, 24, 36, and 48,000 BTUs. Now, take your grow room's total watts from earlier and multiply this number by four. This number is the minimum, let me repeat, minimum amount of BTUs you're going to need. The actual number is 3.42, but I prefer to multiply by 4 because the math is a lot easier, okay? But overspecking means far less wear and tear on your AC unit, prolonging its working life. So if my total is 11,000 watts, I'm going to need at least 44,000 BTUs of air conditioning. Should I choose the 48,000 BTU unit? Mm, maybe, but a smarter choice is to buy two 24,000 BTU units. That way, all my eggs aren't in one basket. If your AC unit decides to give up three weeks before harvest on Labor Day weekend, at least you have the option of running half of your lights on half AC power while you track down a friendly AC engineer. If your target BTU falls halfway between unit sizes, always go up to the next bracket. Like I said, it's infinitely preferable for your air conditioners not to be running running full throttle. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm sure you've got a ton of questions, so hit me up in the comments. Yes, I deliberately made this super simple. Outside temperature and your building's insulation play a huge part in determining your cooling needs too, so if you have doubts, consult a qualified air conditioning professional for advice. I'll go through an actual installation soon, step by step, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel for updates whenever I upload a new video. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter too if your life has room for even more Everest. Until next time, keep cool and carry on growing. Bye for now, amigos.